I'm 29 and my wife is 27. We discovered that we were expecting our second boy when my wife was six months pregnant. We had a baby shower and bought all the essentials for new parents. We already had a five-year-old son, so we could repropose some of his stuff. When she went into labor, I was right there with her, since this wasn't my first rodeo, as I had been there five years prior. As our five-year-old matured, I recall having suspicions about whether he was truly mine because he didn't resemble me at all, but when he was born, I was on cloud nine. I had married my soulmate. We met at a park and hit it off instantly when we became best friends. We had been together for five years. She got pregnant as soon as we started being close, so the thought of her being unfaithful never crossed my mind. We met each other's families and she became tight with my siblings. We tied the knot shortly after our son was born. When doubts started creeping in as he got older, he didn't seem to resemble me. The older he got, the more I noticed how different he looked compared to what I imagined my child would look like. I had nieces and nephews, as did my wife, and I had spent time with them. My son didn't bear any resemblance to anyone from my family. His facial features were distinct, not what I'd expect from either my side or my wife's lineage. It wasn't glaring enough to send me into a frenzy or make me paranoid, but it was my wife's actions that really started to ring alarm bells. Her whereabouts often didn't match up with what she told me. There were significant gaps in her schedule that she couldn't account for. For instance, one weekday she informed me she'd be home late from work as she was visiting a friend in the hospital. Usually her work timings allowed her to take over from the babysitter, but on this occasion I had to leave work early to relieve the babysitter due to her supposed hospital visit. As I was looking after the baby, I casually scrolled through Facebook and stumbled upon the profile of the friend she claimed to be visiting. To my astonishment, this friend had just posted a picture of herself on a family vacation. When my wife returned home, I confronted her about this and she brushed it off saying it was an old photo. Her reaction made me suspicious that she was lying, so I decided to dig a little deeper and reached out to the friend. I shot a message to her friend wishing her a quick recovery and she replied with an elaborate story about her illness. Sensing something was off, I decided to check her boyfriend's Facebook profile too. Sure enough, he was also posting about their vacation, which made it clear that my wife had gone to great lengths to get her friend to lie for her. There were numerous other instances like this. She wouldn't let me interact with anyone from her workplace, and I started suspecting infidelity when a close friend of hers accused her of flirting with her boyfriend. When I confronted my wife about this, she brushed it off, saying they had a falling out and her friend was trying to sabotage our marriage. I took her words with a pinch of salt, never fully buying into her story. Her web of lies started to unravel not long after we got married, but I was too smitten to see it. She would profess her love for me whenever her lies were exposed. If I ever caught her in a lie, she'd try to make me feel guilty, accusing me of being too controlling, judgmental, and suffocating. So when she felt pregnant, I thought it would be a new beginning for us. I thought this would be our fresh start. I found myself in the delivery room, eagerly awaiting the arrival of what I believed to be my second biological son, all the while comforting my supposed wife amidst the medical staff prepping for the imminent birth. She was in agony, blaming me for the pain she was enduring. As I stood by her, gripping her hand tightly, whispering words of comfort and reassurance, the room was buzzing with expectancy. I can recall every tick of the clock in that moment as it marked a more traumatic experience than even the birth of our five-year-old son. As her contractions grew stronger and the medical team guided her through the stages of labor, coaching her on breathing techniques and providing support throughout, I remained by her side, hand in hand. I wished I could absorb the pain she was experiencing. As the medical team readied for the final stage of delivery, I braced myself to welcome another son into our world. At last the moment arrived. Still by her side, I witnessed the climax of months of anticipation and love. I heard the baby's cry before I saw him. When I finally laid eyes on him, I was taken aback because he looked mixed race. All the medical staff, except for the doctor, carried on as if everything was normal. If it hadn't been for the doctor's glance in my direction, I might have thought I was hallucinating. The doctor shot me a look as if to verify my ethnicity before quickly regaining his professional demeanor. The baby's racial background was unmistakably different. In that moment, I felt as if my spirit had left my body frozen in place while everyone else acted as if my wife had just given birth to a mixed-race baby. I could feel her fingers tightening around my hand as my world seemed to collapse around me. It wasn't until the medical team had left the room that I was able to regain my composure. I wanted to confront her right then and there, 
but she was too exhausted and drifting off to sleep. I left the hospital and never returned. Her family assisted her and the baby back home as I refused to lend a hand and had no intention of sticking around to sign the birth certificate. Now her family views me as the villain, conveniently overlooking the fact that she was the one who had been unfaithful. Shortly after, I had a DNA test done on my five-year-old son. The day those test results arrived was the day I filed for separation from my sham of a marriage. She was still recuperating from childbirth when I served her the divorce papers. My mother and sister were staying with us at the time, having helped her from the hospital, when they were present when I handed her the divorce papers. They turned hostile when I served the papers, labeling me a neglectful and irresponsible father. The trio followed me around the house, getting in my personal space, trying to provoke me into a violent reaction. I knew their game plan was to incite me into aggression so they could call the police and use it against me during the divorce proceedings, but I didn't fall for their trap. Up until that point, I had been a dedicated father to her son. I loved him wholeheartedly and put more effort into being the father he deserved than she ever did. Now though, when I look at him, I'm filled with resentment. Resentment towards the woman I spent five years with and resentment towards myself for not trusting my gut instincts. I feel like I've squandered five years of my life. Everything I've worked for is gone, and the emotional impact is even more devastating. I've been labeled a monster by several people for abandoning my son like that. I essentially left with a few pieces of clothing and took up residence in a long-term stay hotel. I plan to stay there until I find an apartment and move some of my belongings, but I intend to leave all my furniture with her. Furthermore, she had a hand in acquiring some of it. I'd rather she kept it. I don't want any remnants of my past life to remind me of her. Even when I was at the hotel, and she had no clue about my whereabouts, she still made several attempts to guilt trip me into returning to her. She would have our five-year-old son call me at odd hours of the night, crying and pleading for his dad to come back home, employing all sorts of manipulative strategies to torment me as if she hadn't done enough already. Then she'd turn around and tell me how much harm I'm causing the family. In every conversation where he's mentioned, both online and in person, I'm criticized and ashamed. Despite the fact that I'm not the boy's biological father, they say I'm his dad. As if her continuous infidelity throughout her marriage wasn't enough, I ended up distancing myself with most of our mutual friends because she used them to gang up on me. They labeled me a horrible person for abandoning the child like that, as if they expected me to continue being fooled despite the hardship. Thankfully, my parents and siblings stood by me. They assured me that they supported whatever decision I made, especially my parents, because they had formed a bond with their son and often babysat for us. I understand how tough it is for them, but any time spent with him just reminds me of her betrayal and how gullible I was. Regrettably, I've come to understand that my feelings didn't matter to some of our closest friends and family members. They believed I should step up for a child who isn't biologically mine. I get it. The boy is innocent, but so am I. The blame rests with his mother, but no one seems to be holding her responsible. All they focus on is how I'm leaving a son, despite DNA evidence proving he's not mine. I understand that the man he's known as his father his entire life just up and left. Yet, I'm expected to just swallow it and act like everything's okay. Some friends and family tried to guilt trip me, suggesting that I never truly loved him or was always looking for an escape route. It's hard to express my emotions in writing, but their accusations that I allowed my intense resentment towards my wife to ruin my five-year-old son's life makes me feel like they don't see me as a human being. Where does her share of the blame lie? Everyone seems to be handling her with kid gloves. Is anyone going to hold her accountable? I'm expected to play the role of a father to a child that isn't mine and just accept being fooled. Am I supposed to just wait for her to have a third or even a fourth child? When does it end? What about me? I'm a person too. I have feelings too. I experience pain. I feel betrayed. I feel undermined as well. Why should I set aside my own life and feelings? I was never the biological father of the boy. I loved him as if I were his father, and honestly, I still do, but I would grow to despise and resent him if I had to continue in that role, and I would loathe myself for not taking control of my life. He's not my child, and even though he's innocent, he shouldn't be my responsibility. We all know where the blame lies. For those suggesting I stay in the boy's life and act as his father, that's not realistically feasible. We're getting a divorce and I'm seeking to disestablish paternity. 
It seems like you're forgetting that I've been cheated on, lied to, and exploited by a selfish, deceitful woman who has now entangled her children in her web of lies. She's an innocent victim of her actions. However, that can't alter the harsh reality we're in. I don't despise him. I feel immense sadness when I think about his feelings. But when I look at him, all I see are the five years of my life filled with lies, the five years I was used, and the five years of mounting doubts and frustrations with a woman who exploited me. There's no way I can set aside my resentment to try and be a part of his life, because the life I thought I had with him was nothing more than a charade orchestrated by his mother. This is the harsh truth I'm grappling with, and I can't in all honesty subject either myself or him to this any longer. She knows who the real father is, so why isn't everyone pushing her to seek him out? Has everyone lost their minds? This isn't easy for me. I can't explain to him why I'm currently seeking to disestablish paternity because she would have me paying child support as a way to keep me entangled in his life. I don't understand why she doesn't want to find his actual father. She's already told me that she'll fight the divorce and put me on child support. She's putting more effort into battling me to stay in the marriage than she did in being a faithful wife. All she had to do was be loyal to me, and she couldn't even manage that. Now suddenly, it's all my fault. Now she's alleging that I was offensive throughout our marriage. I told her that if I was indeed offensive, then she should do everything in her power to keep her children away from me. But no, she insists that I remain a part of his life. My attorney assures me that I stand a good chance of avoiding child support as he's handled similar cases in our state. But there's always the risk that things might not go in my favor. Honestly, my main worry isn't about the money. If it were, I'd willingly pay because I still have love for him. But I don't want his mother to weaponize him against me. It's time for me to move forward and begin anew. I've made a massive error, and the time and emotional distress I've experienced are things I can never reclaim. Now for the top comments. Now that's a pretty heartbreaking experience. My heart goes out to you, OP paternity fraud is alarmingly frequent, and most states and countries are shifting towards prioritizing the child's welfare over the rights of the legal father, thereby fostering more paternity fraud. The well-being of the man is not a concern for the state, and this disregard for men's welfare is contributing to a high rate of self-harm, as men are seen as disposable by the state. They are often seen as nothing more than tax contributors and soldiers. That's a dystopian society that expects men to accept being deceived. No man should be forced to raise a child that isn't his. Just as the wife had the choice to be unfaithful, the husband should have the choice to leave if the child isn't his. Thank you for taking the time to listen to today's story. If you enjoyed these stories, please feel free to like as well as subscribe to the channel. You can write your suggestions in the comments section about the story and what you would do if you ever find yourself in this situation. Also, if you have a story you would like to share, please do not hesitate to contact me. Take care.